how do you photograph a dream? I ask children ages 6 through 12 to go off as journalists and capture what's in their hearts. I ac actually ask children to capture their hopes and dreams with, with a camera. And the children reveal life lessons that we can all learn from. Marilyn, who lives in a shelter in Memphis, said, I hope to show people I am not a nobody. Isaac, who lives in a shelter in San Jose, said, I hope to be better than the people who look down upon me. And Claire, who lived right here in the Salvation Army Door of Hope, said, I hope to find homes for all children. The children I work with are homeless. And through pictures of hope, we dispel many misconceptions about the homeless. There are 22,000 children in New York City without homes. That's the highest number since the Great Depression. In Charlotte, North Carolina, the numbers of homeless children have escalated 36% since 2009. In, two th in Tucson, Arizona, one out of three kids under the age of 18 lives in poverty. So through Pictures of Hope, we are working very hard to create awareness for wonderful children and for their hopes and dreams. And what we do with their photographs, we create cards, greeting cards, with the children's images and with their words. And because of General Motors and Chevrolet, 100% goes right back to the children and the shelters where they live. And I'm going to talk about the impact of Pictures of Hope upon four lives. I met Darius when he was 10 years old and living in Detroit in the Salvation Army. And I asked Darius, after he had written his hopes and dreams in my workshop, I asked if he'd like to come up and read his list in front of a lot of people. In fact, there were many television crews covering and lots of strangers in the audience. And this little 10-year-old walked up on stage and said, I have two dreams. My first dream is for my own bed. And my other dream is to see my mother smile again. And we were all just in tears listening to this child who didn't dream for iPads or iPods. And his dreams were so poignant. And one of the Detroit Lions happened to see this little boy on television. And he said, I want to help that child. So the impact of seeing this child and revealing his heart in those hopes and dreams changed his life because this Detroit Lion called this child at the Salvation Army and said, I, I want to grant your dream. I want to get you your own bed. And by that time, someone had already given him his own bed. And he said, well, I have my own bed, and I also have hero sheets to match. And he said, well, what else can I do for you? And he said, well, we were able to move in our own apartment, and we don't have a refrigerator. He said, well, I'm going to get you a refrigerator. He said, but is there anything else you would like? He said, well, we don't have a stove. He said, well, I'm, I'm going to buy you a stove, too. He said, but it's Christmas time. Is there anything you want just for you? And Darius paused, and he said, there is one thing. He said, I would love to have a lamp because I have to do my homework with a flashlight. So this wonderful athlete ended up decorating their entire home and changed his life. I met Shahid last year when he was living in the Salvation Army with his seven siblings. And his mother works, but she just can't make ends meet. So they ended up homeless. And I was asked to be on Fox News Channel during the holidays, and they said you could pick one child to be on, and I selected Shahid, who's 12, and he was able to fly to New York with his mother, they had never been on an airplane, and they were in New York on Thanksgiving Day, and it was a magical day for all of us. And that night, we had dinner together, and Shahid's mother said to me, Linda, you could have picked anyone. I work with children in 14 cities all over the country, and she said, and 
why did you pick my son? I said, well, on his list of hopes and dreams, he said, and he had written, I hope for help. Now, that's a very hard thing to say, isn't it? Even for us as adults, to ask for help. And yet this child had written this on a list to a stranger. And his life was helped. People that watched him nationally granted many of his dreams, and they are no longer homeless. And coincidentally, he called me today, and I told him to watch. So, Shahid, I know you're watching, and I'm so proud of you. And guess what? They have their own home now. So it's wonderful, and their lives were changed by his picture of hope. I live in Detroit and I live in Tucson. And after the tragedy in Tucson, I wanted to do something to help the community because I had read that children were afraid to go to the grocery store because of the tragedy that occurred with a child who was killed at the Safeway. And I thought, what can I do to help kids? So I volunteered to work at an elementary school in Tucson, but I changed the theme. Instead of having the children photograph their own hopes and dreams, I asked the children to capture their hopes and dreams for America. And then I called a variety of famous Tucsonans and I asked them to be judges. And we were making holiday cards and 100% of the proceeds would go to the Christina Taylor Green, the child who passed away, to her memorial fund. And as I was putting together the list of judges, I read in the New York Times about one of the victims, Susie Heilman. And I read how she was devoted to intergenerational mentoring. So I picked up the phone and called her. I did not know her. And this was four weeks after the tragedy, and she had been shot three times. And I said, I don't know you, but I'm doing this project, and you would be a wonderful judge. I know how devoted you are to children. And she said yes. And as we were doing our judging, one of the children walked into the room, and I will tell you, at that moment, Susie's life changed because this darling little boy, Juan, who's nine years old, the same age as Christina Taylor Green, walked in the room and his photos were incredible. And Susie, as she still was suffering from her injuries, spent time looking through the photos and talking to Juan. And there were television crews there. And she said to Juan, do you know why I was just interviewed? And he said, no. And she said, well, you know what happened at the Safeway a month ago, he said, yes. And she said, well, I'm the lady who had taken Christina Taylor to meet Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. And at that moment, he jumped up out of his seat and hugged her and they both were crying. And she said, I have a big hole in my heart to fill for a nine-year-old, can you fill it? And he said, yes, I wanna fill it. And she, Susie Heilman has been at that elementary school every single week since 2011 mentoring children. Pictures of Hope impacted her life to the point where she could continue her mentoring. She now is called the official school grandmother at Prince Elementary School where I invited her. She is an incredible person because she has started a mentoring group called GRIN grandparents and residents, and they go to the school each week to mentor children. You know, as the wonderful doctor said, as a takeaway, the most important thing we can do is mentor children. Take time, even if it's an hour, to go to a shelter, to go to a school. Often children living in shelters need to be mentored. They've, you know, they've moved from maybe a school to another school and sometimes their skills are lacking. One of the incredible children I met here in San Diego when she was living at the San Diego Salvation Army Door of Hope at the age of nine is now 16 and she's a mentor for children who are now living where she once lived. She's an inspiration to me. She's a very dear friend. And I want to introduce Brittany Pemberton to you. Thanks, Brittany. And Brittany's going to talk to you about her life. Okay. Um, at the age of nine, 
Um, my dad went to jail and um, it was a really scary point in my life and he ended up going to rehab after jail so me and my mom and my brother we had no way of supporting ourselves um, so we ended up in a Salvation Army homeless shelter called the Door of Hope um, and it was a pretty bleak situation you know I was nine I was scared um, I just didn't know what was gonna happen next um, until one day Linda Solomon came and she had a program called the Pictures of Hope at that time I had very little hope in my life but after her program um, the hope in my life has ignited and it still continues when I was nine my hopes were for a house to get a scholarship to college which did happen by the way I hoped for a kitten and world peace and a car which also happened for my 16th birthday and um, to end world hunger and Linda's program really inspired me to try to give back to other kids more and to really just help other people. And so that's what her program does, is it inspires and sparks hope. She's amazing. And I tell you, her mom is here and her parents, because of their wonderful daughter, they have chosen a life to give back as well. And her parents are now cadets with the Salvation Army and are continuing to help people in need. And Brittany will always be an inspiration to everyone. Last year when I was doing Pictures of Hope in Albuquerque, she volunteered with her mom to come to Albuquerque to mentor children in a homeless shelter. And she's not embarrassed to say what they've gone through and what they've achieved in life. She's very proud. And I'm very proud of her. And I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. And the impact of Pictures of Hope is that life begins with hope and a dream. So thank you very, very much.